Today's movie recap is Holes, a 2003 mystery adventure film. Set in a desert, teenagers wearing penitentiary uniforms are excavating ditches under the scorching sun. A young child named Barfbag is bitten on the leg by a viper to escape from laborious work. At the same time, a child named Stanley Yelnets is knocked off his feet somewhere in the city when a pair of sneakers collapses on his head. On the way, he is arrested and accused of swiping the sneakers of a renowned baseball player from a charity event. The detectives are astonished to discover numerous pairs of shoes in every room of the boy's parents' apartment. The police depart the apartment, convinced that the child is a shoe fanatic and the thief of the celebrity's sneakers. The eccentric family believes that Stanley Jr.'s latest misfortune results from an ancient family curse that affects all male members of the Stanley Yelnats family. By court order, Stanley is sent to Camp Green Lake, where he must spend 18 months performing manual labor. The prison is situated in a small oasis in the desert where, despite the name, there is no lake. Stanley encounters the camp warden, who instructs him to address him as Mr. Sir. Stanley is given a prison uniform and a spade, and his duties are explained to him. From dawn to twilight, he must excavate holes in the desert. Introduces Stanley to the other inmates. The adolescents only respond to their nicknames, which include X-Ray, Armpit, Squid, Zigzag, Magnet, and Zero. Zero is the smallest of the teenagers and received his nickname because he is always mute. Stanley joins the team in place of Barf Bag, so the boys initially regard him with disdain. At lunch, Stanley discusses why he was admitted to the camp. He was falsely accused of swiping the shoes of a baseball player. Zero breaks the silence for the first time after hearing the boy's story and asks Stanley if the sneakers had red crosses, which Stanley affirms unexpectedly. Stanley remembers his father's tales about their great-grandfather, Stanley Yelnats I. He is the cause of their family's misfortune. He had previously made a fortune on the stock market, but he was defrauded by a woman known as Kissing Kate Barlow. Once upon a time, the woman and other outlaws operated in the Wild West, and she was notorious for leaving a trail of colorful lipstick on the features of her victims before she killed them. Stanley Yelnats I was a swine farmer in a Latvian village, where he fell in love with his employer's daughter. Stanley decided to consult Madame Zeroni, the local seer, on how to win the girl's affection. The woman advised him to forget about the foolish lady and travel to the United States, where his fate awaited him. Stanley, in love, disregarded the fortune teller and petitioned the girl's father for her hand and heart, only to be denied. To appease the girl's father, the seer advised the lad to take a piglet and transport it daily up the mountain to drink from the stream. Then, as the pig grew larger and larger, it could be presented to the father in exchange for his benediction. After some time, Stanley returned with the gift to the residence of his adored. As the fortune teller had predicted, however, the girl was highly naive. She could not choose between the stunning Stanley and some unattractive man who gave her a pig. Stanley, disappointed by the girl's foolishness, decides to follow the fortune teller's first piece of advice and embarks on a new existence in America. However, the unfortunate man entirely forgets his promise to the lady. He was instructed to bring Madame Zeroni to the same mountain and give her a drink from the stream so that she too could acquire vitality and youth. The child did not comply with the fortune teller's request, so the fortune teller placed an eternal evil on his entire male lineage. On a subsequent day of excavating, Stanley unearths a fossil and gives it to Mother in the hopes of receiving time off for his discovery. However, the psychologist assures him that the warden is uninterested in fossils. Sam has a fixation on Miss Catherine, the local teacher, so he gives her a bag of scallions. In exchange, she presents him with a container of harvested peaches. All the men in town have a covert crush on the beautiful teacher, so they resent the happy couple. The boys accept Stanley into the group and nickname him Caveman. Stanley chuckles at his mother's anecdotes while reading her reply letter. Zero questions why he is laughing and then confesses that he is illiterate. Zero requests Stanley to teach him to read, but Stanley responds that he is exhausted from digging daily and has no time for Zero. Sam offers Catherine to repair the leaking roof at her school in exchange for her signature peaches as the narrative shifts back in time. Catherine agrees, and consequently, the couple begins to integrate steadily. They experience a spark of attraction. Catherine seeks assistance from the local constable after her school is torched, but he ridicules her by stating that her boyfriend will soon be executed. Sam is fatally wounded in his watercraft in front of Catherine. After some time, the girl returns to the sheriff to seek vengeance for the murder of her beloved. She murders the man and gives him a peck on the cheek as payment. 
Her voyage as a renegade under the alias Kissing Kate commences at this point. The granddaughter of the town's owner has inherited her grandfather's foul disposition and forces adolescents to dig day and night for Kate's treasure. The men consider Stanley a hero when he returns to the excavation, and Zero digs a hole for him. He offers to teach Zero to read and write out of gratitude. During their conversation, Zero discloses that his true identity is Hector Zeroni. The child is related to Madame Zeroni, who afflicted the Stanley family many years ago. However, the boys are unaware that their destinies are intertwined as they continue associating. Zero informs his companion about his mother, who abandoned him in the park and vanished. Mother chuckles as Stanley attempts to persuade the adults that Zero is brilliant and should be tutored. He informs Zero that he is so unintelligent that he is unaware of his stupidity. Zero reaches his breaking point and strikes Mother with a shovel before fleeing into the depths of the desert. Stanley recounts his grandfather's tales of how Yelnets the first survived 16 days in the wilderness after Kate Barlow stole his wagon. The following day, Stanley resolves to rescue his companion, who ran away. After a brief drive, the car he stole from the warden falls into one of the openings. After hours of searching the desert under the scorching sun, Stanley eventually locates Zero. The lad has been lurking beneath an old boat that Sam once owned. In the distance, Stanley observes a mountain that resembles a raised thumb to the boys. The child recognizes the mountain from Stanley's grandfather's tale about Yelnats the first. The lads resolve to scale the mountain in search of protection. Stanley clutches a fragile rock ledge as he climbs the boulders and escapes. Zero hands a shovel to his companion so he can use it to clamber up, which causes the child severe palm injuries. But he saves Stanley's life. The lads almost reach the summit, but Zero collapses due to exhaustion and cannot continue. The guys take a pause, during which Hector admits to his friend that he is at camp because of him. Fear of being held accountable, Zero stole the same shoes from his orphanage and hurled them off the bridge onto Stanley. Following his confession, the youngster passes out. Stanley harbors no ill will toward his friend and carries him the remainder of the distance. Consequently, he unintentionally fulfills his great-grandfather's pledge to Madame Zeroni by transporting her great-grandson to the creek at the mountain's summit. The cheerful pair drinks from the water course and consumes the same remarkable onion Sam grew next to the water. The Stanley family's familial curse has been permanently alleviated. Stanley's attorney arrives at the camp and informs the commandant that the boy must be returned home because he is blameless. However, the warden conceals that Stanley has been missing for days and may already be deceased. We travel through time, where Kate Barlow discovers Sam's yacht and rests while recalling her former lover. The town owner approaches the woman to learn where she concealed the stolen treasure. Kate, however, allows herself to be wounded by a lizard with yellow spots and carries the secret to her tomb. Since then, multiple generations of the owner have unsuccessfully excavated through the land of the former lake in search of the treasure. Stanley and Zero are the first to arrive at the excavation site in the morning and unearth the treasure container where Stanley discovered the lipstick tube. The matron and her accomplices intend to remove the treasure from the boys after discovering them. Venomous lizards that have flocked around the lads in the treasure container thwart her plans. A lawyer and the authorities arrive at the excavation site. The commandant accuses the boys of removing the treasure and attempting to flee. But Zero notices the name Stanley Yelnats on the trunk. The story ends with Stanley and the treasure being liberated from the colony, while the warden and her subordinates are detained. Stanley bids his joyful company farewell, and he and Zero return to town. At home, Stanley shares the bounty of his great-grandfather with his family and Zero. The lads become neighbors and extend invitations to all the released camp children. That's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos like this and remember to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.